Hello, delegates. I really wish I could be there with you. And you know, maybe soon this will all be behind us and we can actually get back to meeting together as usual. But uh, I'm uh, recording this in advance. And this morning when I was looking at my newspaper, I saw that Regina, the COVID situation has bounced back up. So uncertainty abounds at this point. I, I don't wanna talk about right now what the situation will be as you're seeing this because things change so fast, don't they? Um, but you have a, an important convention. You have elections that you're going to conduct. I'm not even sure at this point who's running, so I can't say anything about uh, the candidates, which is a good thing. But whoever wins, uh, I wish them well. Uh, and we stand ready to work with whoever you elect. As always, we'll be there for you and we'll be there for them whenever you need us. And we'll welcome your president uh, to our national board and we stand ready to help you and them in any way that we can. The pandemic has really showed us how much work there is to do for a humane and a people-centered society. Uh, inequality has been a problem for years. We've been fighting against inequality, income and wealth inequality, and we found out in the pandemic that it's certainly not an economic theory. It's a real problem for people. And the pandemic has hit people at the lower income levels harder, and that's just an unescapable fact. And we need to grapple with income inequality. We need to have that on our agenda. We can't just say when we come out of the pandemic that we want to get back to normal because normal wasn't working. And we need to uh, really uh, push the call home now for a national childcare program. We've made progress on that. We've gotten attention to it in a way that has been hard to get before. But during the pandemic, everybody could see how important childcare was. We've got a federal government that says they're going to do something about it. It'll be uh, important to keep on them about that issue. They will do something in the budget, but it might not be the right thing. We will continue to fight until we've got a universal, accessible national child care program, which we so desperately need. And there's a new consensus in Canada that we need to do something to fix our long-term care home situation. It's been dreadful, hasn't it? The death rate in for-profit homes has been way higher. The way that staff are treated is way worse in the for-profit homes. It hasn't been good really anywhere, but it has been dreadful in the for-profit sector. And so what we need is we need to fix that problem. We need to bring long-term care under the Canada Health Act. We need to make long-term care part of Medicare. The idea that people should be making profit at the expense of the staff and at the expense of the residents is just not acceptable any longer. And we're fighting hard to get that. And I think we've got the, the uh, attention of the federal government on this as well, but we haven't yet got the problem resolved and we're gonna keep on it. And the same with home care. We need a, a public universal uh, seamless home care system. And we don't have that at all in Canada. We've got piecemeal pieces here and there that don't fit together. We need a national systematic approach to home care. And while we had a pandemic, we had another pandemic and it was called domestic violence. Domestic violence in so many places across this country got worse. And we knew that it was going to. You, you say to people, you're isolated at home, you've got no access to the community, you've got stress levels that are going through the roof, you've got an increased use of alcohol. We knew there was gonna be a problem with domestic violence. And again, we've got the attention now of the federal government on this. They know that they have to do something about it. And we're gonna keep on pushing until we've got that problem resolved. We're gonna work on the overdose crisis. We're gonna keep on pushing on the, uh, the drug overdose crisis that was for a while was not getting any attention because so much attention was being paid to COVID. But the overdose crisis never went away. And we're gonna move back on that and try our best to force that to the front of the line again so that people are paying attention to the need for again, a national program to deal with a national issue called overdoses and the, the terrible rate of death that's caused as a result of the overdose crisis. We're working on the racism issue. And I know that uh, you've been dealing with that as well. You've been making some good moves on that, but we've, we've brought it to the fore where we've got a committee where our components are learning from each other about what works and what doesn't work on the issue of racism. And the other thing that we're really working on or another thing is we know that as we come out of the pandemic, that right across Canada, provincial governments are going to start calling for austerity because they're gonna say, we've got debts now and we spent all the money we had on COVID, which isn't true, uh, and that they need to now move into cut, slash and burn again. 
Some of our premiers are all too willing to follow that line, yours included. And that's just a bad answer for Canada. The public services that are going to be hurt if they follow that uh, path are important services to the public. They're needed services. And it's an economically bad answer because if they do that, it's going to drive the economy into the ditch. So we're working hard right now to shore up our defenses on the post-pandemic economy to make sure that, again, the austerity agenda is not visited on the public sector because it would be a bad move economically, socially, for every reason. It's not needed and it's not acceptable. So those are some of the things we're working on, not all. That's kind of the tip of the iceberg. We've got a, a busy agenda, as always. And you have played a strong and positive role in that agenda. We've had so many meetings of so many different occupational groups and SGU people have been there front and center working with us all the time. Uh, we're gonna continue that. We're gonna continue to work really closely with our frontline activists. We're gonna continue working closely with your provincial leadership. There's struggles ahead. It's, the struggles are never that intimidating when we work together. So we look forward to continuing to work with you as we face all of these very uh, significant but manageable challenges. Have a good convention and thanks for listening.